In this video, I'm going to be covering the lead opportunity capabilities inside of Dynamics 365 Sales. My name is Jesse Buchels and I'm a pre-sales architect at Stone Ridge Software. I'm focused on the Dynamics 365 customer engagement and power platform space. I've got experience with implementing this software prior to joining the sales team and I currently live in Barnesville, Minnesota. In this video, we're going to be covering what it takes to create a lead at a basic level. And then we're going to cover qualifying that lead to become an opportunity, as well as adding products and building a quote. We've got a demo environment set up here where the type of products that we sell are going to be more focused on grocery stores and bakeries looking for bread, uh, croissant type products, so that's what the catalog is going to look like today. So to create a new lead, all I have to do is go down into my leads on my left hand sitemap, and I'm going to get a list of all of my current leads that I'm working as a salesperson. Looks like I've got 17 here. To create a new lead, all I have to do is click plus new, and that's going to take me into a blank form. I can go ahead and start capturing data here on my form if I know the reason why they called, who they are, etc. I've also got this business process flow at the top of my screen. That's going to help guide me through thy sales process. My first stage is qualify. And if I crack open the qualify stage, you can see I've got a few things that I'm being asked to capture as a part of this qualify stage before I move them into the next stage here, which is the develop stage. It's important to note that this is all configurable. So what you see is what you get out of the box, but it's something that we can go in if your business process flow looks very different. Maybe you've got seven or eight or 10 sales stages. We can work with you on that as well, along with the steps that are required to complete within each sales stage. So because we're a bread company, we had someone that called in looking for a quote on wheat bread. We're just going to lay out a topic name here so that we can reference back to this lead very easily. So Amy Smith called in. Amy Smith is the sales manager. And Amy also provided us with a phone number. If we've got a mobile phone and email, great. Maybe those are extras that we want to capture. Amy Smith represents Downtown Grocery. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. We might have some additional information here. And Amy Smith's store is located in Barnesville, Minnesota. Whoops. All right. You can see Maps is already located in here for me. And now all I have to do is go ahead and click Save to create that new lead. Fantastic. So if I open up my Qualify stage now, it's going to tell us more or less, you know, what we've completed so far, what we have yet to complete. And these fields are also all going to be available then on my form as well. So if this was an existing contact or account, we could go in and we could search for it. So if I wanted to search for Amy Smith, no, there isn't an existing Amy Smith. Do we have an existing downtown grocery? No, we do not. All right. Excellent. Do we know the purchase time frame? Well, Amy said that She's looking to purchase this quarter. They have a budget of $5,000 and she's going to be able to be that decision maker. All right. Any other additional information that we want to capture then on this original lead for Amy Smith, we can do so. If we have any activities, maybe there was an incoming email and we've got that native integration with Outlook where we're capturing that email here in our timeline. Our timeline is really important because it captures all those activities related to the record. So any phone calls that I've made, any meetings that I've set up or tasks I've created, I want to capture all those right here, along with maybe any other notes. As soon as I'm ready to qualify this lead to become an opportunity, all I have to do is click the qualify button up here in my command bar. And that's going to do a couple of things for me. So it's going to run a workflow that's going to create a new contact record for Amy Smith. It's going to create a new account record for Downtown Grocery. 
And it's gonna also convert my lead into an opportunity. If you look here on the left, it actually jumped us right into the opportunities table. So now I have this brand new record, opportunity record, and it's moved me into my develop stage. In my develop stage here is where I can start adding products and capturing additional information. If I open my develop stage, you can see that I've got different tasks that I need to complete. So I need to capture what is the customer's need and what's our proposed solution? Have we identified stakeholders or competitors if necessary? Down below here, you can see we can capture some of that information here as well. All right, if we're ready to start building out a quote for Amy, we can go into their product line items. Because this is a new customer, we need to identify a price list. So we're gonna choose our basic Contoso Bakery price list. We want the system to automatically calculate the revenue for us. So let's go ahead and start adding products. If I click add products, that's gonna open up our product catalog. Now your product catalog could be integrated with an ERP system. It could be uh, something that just lives in Dynamics 365 as well. So here's my add products window. And over on the left, you can see I've got some different product families. So here's a list of all my products. If I wanted to do a quick search, I could. I've got some filtering capabilities. But let's just go ahead and open up bread. You can see we've got three products here. And it looks like they wanted some whole wheat. So let's go ahead and add 500 loaves of wheat bread. All right, here we go. So we've got our products added. If we wanted to add additional products, we could. And we also have an option to add write-in products there. So we've got our products laid out. We wanna come back to our opportunity. So I'm gonna go back to my summary tab and potentially build out some additional uh, information here. Maybe I'm capturing, again, more interactions in that timeline. And ultimately, I wanna move on from my develop to my propose stage. So this might be where I'm going to start creating a quote, getting it in front of my customer. Those might be additional tasks that are captured here between that develop and propose stage. So I can go ahead and start checking these off as I'm completing them. All right, now if I'm ready to start building out that quote, I've added my product line items already. All I have to do is go to my quote tab, click plus new quote, and that's gonna take everything from my opportunity that includes my contact and customer, as well as any products that I've added, and it's going to add them to a new quote for me. So here you can see it's captured all that information. It's got all my details here, and I can start adding discounts as well, if I've got the security to do so based on my security role. So I might have a percentage discount. Maybe I'm offering 10% off. I could have a flat discount amount as well. So maybe I'm just gonna throw $500 in there. We'll give them a 10% discount as a first time buyer. If we needed to add any freight, we could also do so from here. So we'll go ahead and save that. And that's gonna knock $90 off now. So we've got a new total. Over here, we're referencing our opportunity as well as our customer. I might want to apply an effective from and to date as well. So maybe this is going to expire on a certain date. So it's going to be effective today. We're going to allow them till the 23rd to make a decision. Over on the left here, you can see we're in revision zero. If I wanted to go ahead and activate this quote so that I can send it out, I can activate it. And should we send this off and get a response back from the customer that maybe they want to add more product or less or add additional products, we could go ahead and we could revise this quote as well. We're gonna have history of each of the revisions that we can reference back to for this quote also. Down below on the left, if we're capturing any shipping information, addresses, this can all be mapped over right from the customer as well. So you might have default shipping methods, payment terms, freight terms, and addresses that we can just have mapped in. So you're not manually having to add that information. Once we're ready to send this to a customer, I'm gonna click export to PDF. And that's gonna give me a couple of different options. I can go ahead and I can download this as a PDF. I can email it direct to my client or to my customer because I've got an integration with Outlook, it makes it very easy. I can also turn around and save this to SharePoint if I'm using that as my document management solution. Another important aspect of quotes is the template itself. 
We've got options to add multiple templates. I just have two right now, but you might have several. Your quote templates might have different personalizations such as company logo, different language contained, and you might have different quotes depending on the type of products or business line. So here you can see, we've, again, we've just got a couple. Again, you might have logos in different language on yours or maybe even a different format for your table. Once you choose the template that you want for this particular quote layout, we can go ahead and again, download, email it, or save it to SharePoint. If I wanted to email this to my customer, that's gonna actually open up a new message for me so I don't have to navigate away to Outlook. I don't need to download this and attach it to an email. It's gonna do that for me. So here in my new email message, it's going to automatically add my email address as well as the customer's email address if there is one. You can see on the right, it created that PDF. And then down below, we've got our message. Now this might be an opportunity for you to create email templates also. So I can create email templates that contain static and dynamic content, so it automatically populate names, company names, quotes, etc. All of that information can be pre-populated, as well as a signature for each user. And once I'm ready to send that off, all I have to do is hit send. I don't have an actual email address in here, so I'm not going to do so. I'm just gonna save and close this for now, but that's what it would look like to send that to your customer. Saving to SharePoint is also very straightforward. All I have to do is click Save to SharePoint, and it's gonna take care of that for me. Once I've sent this off to my customer, I'm obviously gonna look for that response from them. You know, Maybe I need their, their approval or a signature to proceed, and then we can go ahead and close out that opportunity. To get back to my opportunity, all I have to do is select it here, and that'll take me right back to it. But I've also got some additional options up top here. So I can go ahead and I can create an order from this quote, and then ultimately create an invoice. And we'll cover that in a different video. I'm gonna take this back to my opportunity now. And we're gonna see now in our timeline that we've gone in and we've created a quote and here it is. Here's that quote, we can go ahead and reference it here. If we were to go back to this company in contact, we're also going to see that in the timeline there. I hope this video helped you under better understand that lead to opportunity process in Dynamics 365. Thank you for watching.